Today's project is throwing a ball-shaped one-piece lidded jar. In the previous throwing a one-piece lidded jar video, I showed the technique for separating the lid from the jar using a chopstick after I made a closed form pot. In this video, I'm going to use a different technique to separate the lid from the jar. The reason is that this time I'm going to make a bowl shaped jar. You will see the different technique in the video. Using these different techniques will expand the variety of jar shapes you can make. I use 500 gram of stoneware clay on the throwing bat. I'm centering the clay. The edge of my right palm is compressing the clay and the fingers of my left hand are tightly guarding to make a straight wall. My left middle finger is working so as not to make a mushroom shape. And the little finger's job is to keep the bottom line clean. I'm making a center hole using my right middle finger to dig in the center and my left fingers are giving extra pressure. Then I'm opening the hole by sliding my right thumb. I'm compressing the bottom with a spatula. I'm going to make a gentle first stretch. The purpose is to make a straight flat wall to start with. I'm compressing the top from three directions. The next stretch. My right ring finger is pushing the bottom in and my middle and index finger are firmly attached on the top. Both thumbs are interlocked to keep my hands shaped in a single form. My left middle and ring fingers are opposite my right fingers, but slightly higher. I'm bringing the top in to keep the straight wall. I'm going to close the cylinder. I start one third down from the top. My hands are in diamond shape. When I start to close the cylinder, the edge clay becomes thicker and buckled, so I need to smooth and stretch the edge. I need to repeat the same process to keep the wall a good even thickness. I'm making a mountain shape first.
At this point, if I try to make a dome shape to reach my final image, the top will collapse easily. I can manipulate the shape later once the top is closed. I'm slowly pushing with my right index finger and my left middle finger is supporting the wall so it doesn't collapse. Now the hole is closed, I can start to shape. I want to make a round ball shaped jar. I still make the initial shape as a straight wall jar. If I make a round belly cylinder, then close the top, it will end up in a slightly squashed ball shape. So to make the process easier, I make a straight wall cylinder, then close the top. Now I can make a ball shape easily. I'm making a small knob. Sometimes I don't make a knob. Just round the top, then make a hole for a string to come out. I'm trimming the bottom to make a round shape. It is also a guide for the string to cut. I need to open a small hole for the air ventilation. When the clay start to dry, it shrinks and if the air trapped inside doesn't have an exit, the ball will crack. I wet the jar bottom and do tap centering. The water starts to make the jar and the wheel stick together. So the tapping strings needs to be adjusted instinctively. I'm marking the cutting line. I'm attaching the jar to the wheel using skimmed clay. The angle of the needle is 45 degree. With this angle, I can leave enough clay to reshape for the both parts. Both my arms are heavily anchored to the wheel tray. You can see my left hand is holding my right wrist firmly to keep a steady position. My right middle finger is attached to the needle and the jar at the same time. I'm making a flat bottom for the lid. There isn't much clay I can lose, so I compress the clay rather than trim to make a flat bottom.
The inside still has a good amount of clay, so I'm trimming the surface. I'm checking the lid size. I'm going to recess the jar edge. The corner of the cut edge is thin, so I'm compressing the edge with my fingers. My fingers feel the condition of the clay better, so I can sense how much pressure I should give to the clay. Then I'm using the wooden tool. Now I need to bring the rim slightly in. When I trim the lid edge later, the lid will be slightly smaller to fit this circle. So I compress the rim very slightly inwards. I can see the lid has extra clay to finish the nice edge. I'm going to trim the jar with a loop tool. This one has round wire, so it will polish the surface at the same time. This is a rare case of having difficulty separating the pot from the wheel with a metal kidney. Usually it comes off easily, but I may have used too much water this time, so the center part of the bottom has stuck to the wheel. Okay, plan B. I'm going to trim the bottom. I will finish the jar without a foot ring, so I compress and polish the bottom with a metal kidney. And make sure the center is very slightly lower than the outside. Then I will not have a rocking problem 